When your 3D printing filament is wet, it'll print worse. Filaments with moisture in them, uh, they suffer from stringing. You can get little bubbles or zits on your print. Everything about the print is worse if the filament has moisture in it. So uh, no problem, just don't uh, soak your filament in a bowl of water before you print, right? No, as you probably know, filament can absorb moisture from the air. And that's especially true if you're working with hygroscopic filaments like, so I hear, ABS and nylon. I don't print ABS and nylon yet, just haven't gotten there yet. But even TPU and yes, even PLA can be somewhat affected by moisture in the air. And that's what brings us to this, the product that we're looking at today. This is a filament dryer box from Sovol. Uh, and we're gonna look at this. We're gonna talk about how it compares to other methods of drying your filament and whether you even really, this is a problem that you even need to solve or whether you could just maybe solve this problem with things you already have in your house. I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're gonna learn something today. The product that we're looking at today, the Sovol filament dryer was sent to me by Sovol in exchange for this review. I have not received any money or any other form of compensation in exchange for this review, and nobody has had any editorial control or input into the contents of this video other than me. I gotta start this video like I start all my 3D printing videos by saying that unlike in FPV where I am actually like an authority in the field, when it comes to 3D printing, I'm just kind of going along as I go. And I still hope to make useful and maybe even entertaining content for you. But if you really want the straight dope about 3D printing, there are guys out there like Teaching Tech and uh, Makers Muse who do 3D printing content and are straight up experts. With that out of the way, let's take a look at this product. And the first thing I did when I started thinking about how I was gonna review this product is, to ask myself, do I even need it? Two, here are two Benchies that I printed. They are printed out of TPU, which is the most common filament that I print. And one of these was printed with a fresh, out of the seal spool of filament, brand new, presumably dry. And one of these was printed with a roll of TPU that has been sitting in my basement pretty much all winter just was sitting over in a corner and wasn't used. And I was like, aha. And I said to myself, if anything has absorbed moisture, this will have absorbed moisture. And I printed these guys. And to, to be honest with you, I'm not sure I could tell you which one was which. The result was very, very similar. By the way, don't let the fact that this little defect is here. That's because the PTFE tube in my hot end was wearing out. Uh, regardless, there's almost no perceptible difference between these guys. So the takeaway for me is that maybe it's not as important that I dry my filament before I print, at least TPU, at least during the winter when humidity is lower. Obviously I live in Knoxville, humidity is crazy during the summer, but also uh, I have air conditioning and my basement is pretty well temperature and humidity controlled most of the time. But especially if you're printing other filaments, like I mentioned before, ABS and nylon are particularly bad for absorbing moisture out of the air. So I hear, I don't print them personally. Or if you just wanna be sure that you're getting the best possible results, drying your filament before you're printing is a good idea. And this is especially true if you're having trouble, if you're just can't get your settings right, there's constant stringing and bubbling and you're like, ah, what am I doing wrong? Maybe you need to dry your stinking filament. It's good insurance at the very least. Now, we're gonna look at this Solvo filament dryer box. But before we do, I wanna tell you that the way I have always dried my filament is to go up to my kitchen, to put the oven on warm, which is 170 degrees Fahrenheit, whatever that works out to Celsius, editor. <laughs> and I just put the filament in the oven and let it dry on the lowest temperature, the warm temperature. Now that almost always works just fine because that temperature is nowhere near the glass transition temperature. It doesn't melt or otherwise affect the filament. But uh, sometimes it doesn't work out so good. You see, once upon a time I said, why would I heat up my whole oven? Why not use this little toaster oven that I've got and we'll put it on warm and it 
Thankfully, the filament seems to be okay, but it melted the freaking spool. And it did that because the ovens are not very well temperature controlled. I know, like, oh, they're 350 degrees, whatever. You're cooking. Yeah, they have a thermostat, but there can be big swings in oven temperature up and down. And in a great big oven, the swings as the heating element turns on and off kind of balance out, I guess. But in that little toaster oven, it was so close to the heating element that even though it was set on the low warm setting, it was enough to melt this. So if you decide to go that direction, put your freaking filament on like a baking sheet, a rimmed baking sheet, like a cookie sheet, so that if you ruin the whole roll of filament by melting it, you don't also have to clean a bunch of melted plastic out of your freaking oven. <clears throat> So here's the box. Uh, it plugs in with a 12 volt power adapter in the back and I've got some clips to hold the lid shut. There we go, we'll just do that. And the controls are very simple. When you turn it on, it's gonna show a reading of the temperature and the humidity uh, inside the box. Very simple temperature and humidity sensor inside. Uh, we can then press this button to change the temperature. It goes from 40, all the way up to 40, 45, 50. That's it, 45, 50. So if you need much higher temperature to dry, like I, 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 another reviewer said nylon requires 70 degrees Celsius to dry out. It's not gonna work to dry out uh, the filaments that need higher temperatures, but 50 degrees is fine for most filaments, PLA, TPU, etc. cetera. Um, and then, so you set your temperature and you set your time, it begins to heat up. Now we're gonna do a thermal analysis. I've actually got a FLIR camera and we're gonna look at it a little bit later in the video. But um, let's just open this up. You can see that it has a fan blowing right here and that's gonna circulate air inside, but it's not actually bringing air in from the outside. It's just helping the air move around a little bit. Um, there have been some uh, reviews that talk about how when the heating element is at the bottom and there's no airflow, just one side of the filament gets hot and the other side doesn't. Now, obviously, because this doesn't have any insulation whatsoever, obviously the top is gonna be cooler than being right down at the bottom, but it does help circulate there a little bit. And again, we'll take a look at the thermal performance in just a minute. We've got these rollers here. Uh, I did have to install these rollers. They were loose inside here. Just pop the bearings in and pop the roller down. The filament goes, oh, this spool is too wide. This is a one kilogram spool of PETG. It is too wide. It's supposed to be two spools worth. I'm just gonna go on there. And in addition, we have these holes here at the top. This is a Teflon liner. So we can actually leave this in here, hook this up, and it can draw the filament out. We should probably put that the other way around. So it's pulling upwards. Yeah, that seems smart. Turn that over. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Um, there are other dry boxes that will have some kind of uh, like a PTFE tube, like Capricorn tubing or something, to let you run straight into your printer's hot end or into a filament runout sensor. Uh, this does not have that. It's just gonna be that, that naked uh, filament there. So you're probably gonna wanna find some way of preventing it from being at too sharp of an angle or just install one of those little clips that clips to, to Capricorn tubing or something like that. Um, otherwise, especially with like PT, uh, PLA, PLA can get really brittle, especially if it gets older or dries out. And uh, yeah, PLA will oftentimes just break off if it's at too much of a, uh, a bend for too long. The rollers work pretty well. Yeah, no problem. Now I'm surprised that that roll didn't fit because that is a one kilogram roll of PETG. It is one kilogram. This is a one kilogram roll of PLA. And despite the fact that it is a little deformed, you can see it'll definitely fit in there side by side. And I'm not sure if that's a larger diameter spool. I guess it's a larger diameter spool. I'm not sure why the PETG is sold that way. Tell me in the comments if you know, or if it's just a, uh, the Amazon thing. But all the other spools I've got, the TPU and the PLA come on this size spool and it fits in there and you can fit two of them in there side by side. Ooh, the peel. 
Now let's take a look at the thermal performance of the unit. And mo mostly this is just an excuse to write off my FLIR camera as a business expense, but it is nice to see <laughs> the thermal performance. Uh, and as expected, the unit begins to heat up. It does take some time to heat up. It is not an ultra high powered heating element, but you, you wouldn't expect that. The goal of this is to not melt the filament it's just to gently heat it over a period of three to six hours to dry the filament out or to keep it dry while you're printing. It does heat up and the humidity inside the box does go down uh, as you would expect. So that brings us to the end of the video. And as always, the question, should you buy it? And in order to answer that question, I'm gonna compare it to a few other dry boxes that are out there. We have to start by acknowledging that if you are on a tight budget, you absolutely can build your own version of this for about half the price, about 20 or 30 bucks all in, and you can build it much bigger. You can just get any old plastic container that you want and fill it up with filament and have desiccant and heating elements and fans. And if that's what you're into, you definitely can come out cheaper. But presumably, the kind of person who is looking at buying a dry box doesn't want to go through all that hassle. They just want a ready-made solution. Um, one thing that I did notice about the Sovol is that it doesn't have a specific compartment to put desiccant packs in. It doesn't have a specific desiccant compartment, but uh, Sovol points out you can easily just put some desiccant packs down, you know, in the corners uh, of the box and stuff I mean, help you out there. So that's really not a differentiator. It does have a silicon seal here to help keep uh, environmental moisture out if you are not using the heating element for extended periods of time. The other big thing that the Sovol doesn't have is a scale. And this I think is gonna be a real differentiator for a lot of people. If you have a scale and you know the tear weight of your spool, then you can just know how much filament is left on your spool and so when Cura or whatever slicer you're using says, you're gonna use 47 grams of filament for this print, you don't have to wonder, do I have enough filament left on the spool to run this print? You just know. That is a super, super cool feature. Um, and the only box I found that had a spool built in in my relatively limited searching was the eSun box. Now the eSun box is $65, whereas the Sovol is about $60. The eSun box has better insulation. It's, it's, it goes up to 80 degrees. So if you're drying nylon or ABS, it can go as hot as you need it to go. And uh, the only real downside is that it only holds a single spool of filament. And that's also true for some of the other budget boxes that are out there. But there are budget boxes out there that come in around $45 to $50 and have similar functionality to the Sovol, but only hold a single spool. So I think uh, my take on it is, if you don't wanna build your own, and you don't care too much about the lack of a scale, the ability to get two spools worth of heating for a price of 60 bucks in the Sovol box seems pretty competitive. What do you think of the Sovol dry box? Is this a good value compared to the other stuff that's out there? Let me know down in the comments. I'd love to hear your thoughts, especially as, like I said, I'm not yet an expert 3D printing guy, and maybe I never will be, but I'm having fun making videos and I hope you're enjoying watching them. Links to this product and the other products that I mentioned are in the video description below. They are affiliate links. And in case you're new here, what that means is that when you click that link and then make any purchase at the affiliated vendor, you don't have to buy the product, you buy anything. You click the link, you make a purchase, I get a small commission, it helps support the channel. It doesn't cost you anything. It's a really easy thing to do. Thank you so much for watching. Happy flying. What are you doing in here? The least you could do is subscribe or Join my Patreon or like just here's another video I picked out for you. Jeez.